Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'll be doing a review of the Xtool P2 55W CO2 machine. This is the most powerful laser that Xtool currently makes and comes with a host of features I have not seen on other competing desktop CO2 machines on the market, including 3D scanning and engraving of curved surfaces. So what do I like about this machine? What do I think could be improved? Well, let's find out. First of all, this machine was very well packaged, but honestly probably not well enough for the fine folks at uh, I live up some stairs and happened to catch my delivery person literally flipping the box up the stairs end over end when clearly this is an expensive piece of equipment with a fragile warning all over it. However, the machine did make it in one piece and everything seemed to be fine, so I guess it was packaged pretty well. Now, this is not a machine that you just plug in and start up. There is a little setup, just like there is with most diode lasers, uh, although the setup for a CO2 machine is a little different. The first thing you need to do is add the antifreeze to the coolant tank. To do this, you need to remove some screws from the inside of the machine, and then also remove some screws from the back of the machine. This exposes the tank on the back of the machine and also gives you a look at the laser tube that generates the beam for this CO2 laser. You then use the provided antifreeze solution with a mixture of distilled water where the amounts of each are determined by the lowest temperature range of wherever it is that you live. You then pour the solution in the tank and you are ready to almost start the machine. It's also a good idea at this point to remove the first mirror on this laser and clean it with alcohol. It's, a, it's magnetic so it just pops on and off. I then turned on the machine to make sure everything works and the fluid pumps through the laser tube. I didn't see any leaks after it somersault up the stairs, uh, and everything looked good. Now the last thing I'll say about filling up the coolant was I wish I didn't have to remove the entire back plate to access it. It would have been nice if there was an easier way to access that tank, but you really shouldn't have to do it very often, so it wasn't that bad. And it gave me a look at the laser tube itself. The next step was to adjust and clean all of the other mirrors for the machine. I first remove the mirrors and then clean them with some alcohol. Again, these are magnetic so it's really easy to remove them and clean them. I did the same thing to the lens on the gantry as well just to make sure everything was clean. The next thing you have to do is make sure your mirrors are aligned correctly. While this wasn't super hard to do, it does take a little time, but as long as you follow the instructions you, you should be able to make some micro adjustments to the mirrors to make sure your laser hits the right spot on your lens. Okay, with all the setup, it's now time to go through the specs of this machine. Like I said before, this is a 55 watt CO2 laser with a work area of 680 by 360 millimeters. Uh, the workable area can increase even further with the additional conveyor function that you can purchase separately that I will talk about in a moment. The bed is made from removable slats that allow for better cutting and hold down opportunities. It also comes with these little spring loaded hold downs to keep your work pieces static by attaching them to the slats. Below the bed is a tray to catch all of your debris and protect your table. As you can see below here, I have an, the additional accessory that you can purchase that will lift the entire machine up to allow you to engrave on taller objects as well as a pass-through that I will talk more about later. The machine comes with two different 16 megapixel cameras that you can see what you are working on in the included Xtool Creative Space software. This gives you a quick and easy way to line up your jobs to the workpiece. The first camera gives you a clear picture of the entire work surface, and the second close-up camera will give you a detailed portion of the workable area. These don't always 100% line up perfectly, but they will get you pretty close, especially that detailed camera. This machine can also work with light burn for the regular functions, but at the time of this review, there are a few things not working in light burn currently, like the camera, 3D engraving, and auto height measurements. Uh, you can still engrave and cut, but it does require a little different setup. Uh, you essentially have to run startup G code that will adjust the laser based on the measured height of your workpiece. It still works, and hopefully they can integrate some of the other features of this machine into Lightburn soon. 
Xtool Creator Space also gives you the ability to control the machine through Wi-Fi so you won't need to use the USB cable after the initial setup. Like I was just saying, there are two autofocus lasers in the P2. One off to the side that will measure the height of your workpiece, and one on the laser gantry itself for an even more accurate measurement. After setting the proper height of the material workpiece, the laser head will automatically lower to the entered height when engraving or cutting. There is a stepper motor that will move the lens up and down. As you can see, there is also a built-in air assist that can also be controlled through the software by turning it on and off per layer. That is also a new function of Xtool Creative Space that now has the layer function built into the software. I will probably go over Creative Space in another future video for the P2, just like I, I did previously for the Xtool D1. In the back of the machine, you can see the aviation port to attach the rotary tool to the laser. Next to that is a connector port that will allow you to use Xtool's fire safety set that will use CO2 gas to smother out flames if they're ever detected. On the top of the enclosure is the display that will show you the current status of the machine, as well as a push button to start your jobs. On the back right of the machine is an emergency stop button that will immediately shut down everything in the case of an emergency. It's a bit odd that the button is near the back and not super prominent on the front, but it's there in case you ever need it. Another additional safety feature is a locking door that will not allow you to open the enclosure while the machine is in use. This machine uses an infrared laser that is naked to the human eye, but is still harmful so it's important that you have the lid down to protect your eyes. Even after the job is done, it will stay locked for a few seconds until the internal fans have evacuated the smoke from the enclosure. There is a pretty nice exhaust system in the rear, and it does a very good job of evacuating the fumes out the back of the machine. The laser spot size of the machine is 0.15 by 0.2 millimeters. This means that with all of this power comes a slightly larger and thus less detailed point. To put this in perspective, the Xtool 20 watt D1 Pro, that laser spot is 0.08 millimeters by 0.1 millimeters. That's roughly a quarter of the size of this laser point, which would give you a much more detailed engraving, but at almost two thirds less power than this CO2 machine. Other than the power and size of the laser spot, there are differences between a diode laser and a CO2 laser like this machine, but I would guess the most notable thing, other than the power, is what this CO2 machine can do that a diode laser could never, and that is cut clear materials. No matter how powerful a diode laser is, it will never be able to cut clear acrylic, and this machine can. So with the machine up and running, I ran some tests to see how it could handle some engraving of images. I ran these images at 200 millimeters per second at 20% power, and 196 dpi. Even with that larger spot size that I was talking about before, the machine performed pretty well. I was pretty happy with how these came out, and it worked pretty flawlessly. I could probably have even increased the speed and power to do it even faster, but it worked out pretty nice for me as it was. The machine also can cut at pretty fast speeds as well, which many times is the reason that people opt for a CO2 machine. However, for some, that speed does come with a slight trade-off. While the material will cut faster, and the built-in air assist does a decent job of keeping the char to a minimum, there is still more charring than you would see on a diode laser machine with a smaller spot size and an air assist. Again, it's not too bad, and the back side still comes out pretty clean, but the front does still have a little bit of charring with the larger spot size and stronger power. Now, a bunch of this does have to do with the type of wood, but I definitely was cutting this same wood with my D1 with less charring, although it was slower. I wanted to try clear acrylic because, like I mentioned before, it's not something that my diode machines can do. I wanted to create a bit of an enclosure for my Buster Beagle 3D MK3 injection molding machine, so I thought this would be a perfect test project. I first tested everything out really quick with cardboard to make sure I had all my measurements correct, and then I cut into this quarter inch thick clear acrylic at eight millimeters per second at 100% power. It did an amazing job and the machine did a pretty good job of pumping all the fumes outside. 
If any of you have ever cut acrylic, it either smells like a dentist's office or a nail salon. I will definitely be using this to cut more clear acrylic in the future. Another cool feature of this machine that I have not seen on any of my other lasers is the curved surface engraving mode. Essentially, you are able to scan an object with the machine and it will create a 3D model that will allow you to engrave on that curved surface. This can also work on slope surfaces as well or just slightly uneven surfaces. I won't go into too much detail of this function as I have already released another video dedicated to this part of the machine that I will link above. I will say though that other than the fact that you can engrave on things like bowls and other curves objects, you can also do engravings on glasses and tumblers without the use of a rotary. I did it on this cup and it worked out great. Uh, of course, you are limited to how much of the cup you can engrave on because you are not rotating it, but you can still get some pretty nice results. If you want to engrave fully using a rotary, this machine is compatible with the RA2 Pro. However, if you already had the RA2 Pro from your Xtool D1 machines, you will need to ask Xtool to send you the proper aviation connection to use with the RA2 Pro and this machine as the wires that connected that to the D1 are different. With the rotary connected, I was able to very quickly burn a few tumblers and they came out great. One gripe that I have here was actually about how I need to align the RA2 Pro to the machine. It's very important that you line up the rotary so that it is square to the laser. However, there is not a great way to align the laser to the rotary. You can't really rely on the tray underneath the laser to align the rotary as it could potentially shift. I also should point out here that without the additional riser that I have under the machine, you would only be able to engrave on glasses and tumblers up to 50 millimeters in diameter. My particular tumbler was 87 millimeters in diameter, so that would not have been possible without the optional riser or some other way of lifting the machine up. So the way I was able to align everything was to place a square object between the bracket for the work area slats and the RA2 Pro. Since the bracket that holds the slats is part of the main frame of the machine, I knew that my laser gantry was square to that, and thus my rotary would be square to it as well. Again, this worked fine, but I really wish there was a more built-in and easier way to accomplish this since being square is so important to achieving a nice and even tumbler. Now again, this was possible at all because of the addition of that riser that the machine is sitting on. This gives you up to an extra 215 millimeters of clearance, or 8.4 inches. The riser also gives you the ability to pass through longer materials up to 640 millimeters wide, which is just over 25 inches, and 115 millimeters tall, or 4.5 inches. This P2 essentially just sits on the riser and allows for all of these additional features. My guess is that my P2 is going to permanently sit atop this riser as the machine is about 100 pounds. Again, it's an extra accessory and is not included with the base P2, but with the addition of another accessory, it really makes that riser impressive for the P2, and that is the automatic conveyor feeder. This is another optional accessory for the P2, which will allow you to run up to 3,000 by 500 millimeters, or 118 by 19 inches. It hooks up to the same port as the rotary, and then bolts onto the bottom of the P2. There are also additional rails that can be purchased that will allow you to hold the longer material sticking out the front and back of the machine. I only had a smaller piece of wood to test this on, and while it did work, I feel like I went a little too fast and too high power, which gave me some dark look and some inaccuracies. That was more my fault than the machine, and it did work as it intended to. I do, however, have two small issues with how this conveyor works. The first issue is the fact that when you are using the pass-through or conveyor, you obviously have the sides of the enclosure open. This 100% affects how the enclosure performs, and the smoke and fumes will enter the room a little more than they would before, but I still say that the majority gets sucked out through the ventilation system, which I said before was, was actually pretty good. You just definitely want to use the pass-through or the conveyor in a place with better ventilation. The second slight issue I have with the conveyor is the design while cutting. 
there is a section on the conveyor just past the rollers where all of the engraving and cutting is supposed to take place. You can see it here, it's this metal grid section. This would work great while engraving, but the issue I see comes while cutting. The issue is that there is no airflow, so you would get a lot of charring on the backside of the piece that you're trying to cut, and it wouldn't be as efficient. You can see that this section of metal is removable, so it would have been nice if there was an interchangeable honeycomb attachment here to make cutting easier. Also, the instructions state that all of the engraving and especially the cutting should take place over that metal plate. You'd run the risk of damaging your conveyor rollers if you cut past that section. So for my overall thoughts on the CO2 machine and if I think it might be the laser for you. I'm also going to break this down a little bit based on the accessories since I was mentioning a lot of things here that don't come with the base model. So overall, I think this is a really cool and solid machine. It's well built and has a host of cool features that I really have not seen on a desktop CO2 laser before. Uh, but do you need a CO2 laser? First, I would say if cutting is primarily the thing you want to do, this will be faster and more powerful than any of the other diode lasers that X-Tool sells. Also, if you want to be able to cut clear materials, then you would have to use a CO2 machine since it's not possible with a diode laser. If you want to engrave and sometimes cut thinner materials and not cut clear, then you can get a lot of stuff done with a diode laser. It's cheaper, lighter, potentially easier to set up without adjusting mirrors and such, and uh, much less dedicated space. My current D1 is hanging on a cabinet door right now since I needed a little extra space for other projects I'm working on. This P2 will not be able to hang on anything and needs a dedicated and permanent space. The P2 base model also has cameras, curved surface engraving, uh, built-in air assist, uh, safety features like the locking cover and automatic focusing. The base model by itself is fairly powerful and for many might be all you need. So maybe you are sold on the P2, but should you get the riser base for this laser? Well, that also depends on your needs, but if you want to engrave taller objects, you certainly would benefit from that extra space. If you want to use the RA2 and you have a glass or tumbler that is over 50 millimeters in diameter, you would either need to use the riser, or I suppose you could go buy four bricks and raise the entire machine up just enough to burn that regular tumbler. It is a nice add-on and also allows you to place longer materials with the pass-through doors if you ever wanted to engrave or cut on longer materials. Again, this machine is not light, so the riser does provide a nice solid base for that P2 to sit on. Also, if you want to use that conveyor, then the riser is also pretty convenient. Then again, if you really wanted to, you could prop the machine up on some bricks and still attach the conveyor, but I don't think I would recommend that. This is a pretty delicate machine, especially with that glass tube, so it's not really something I would recommend precariously propping up with something. So that's it. I hope this shed a little bit of light on this pretty powerful and well-built machine. I wanted to thank Xtool for providing this machine to me for my honest review. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.